Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll do equilibrium reactions. I split it in two videos. Um, I'll start with the homework from my last two videos on acids and bases. So the first question was finding the concentration of hydroxyl ion when the concentration of hydrogen was given, which was 0 0.1. Now 0 0.1 is equal to 10 to the power minus 1. So using our equation where Kw is equal to 10 to the power minus 14, and we need to find hydroxide and hydrogen is 10 to the power minus 1. So dividing both of them, which leads to subtraction of the um, superscript numbers, we get 10 to the power minus 13. Then moving on to our second question, which was finding the pH when the concentration of hydrogen was given as 10 to the power minus 7. Now we know that pH is minus logarithm of hydrogen concentration, so our pH is equal to 7. The next question was an MCQ. You had to tell me which of the following acids was a bronsted Lowry acid, which the answer was D. Why? Because acetic acid has um, a hydrogen ion to donate, so it is a proton donor, which are acids. And the last question was which of the following is amphoteric? The answer was C because hydrogen sulfate receives an hydrogen if it becomes um, sulfuric acid. If it releases a hydrogen, it becomes sulfate ion. The first question was uh, which of the acids is the strongest? The answer is C. Why? Because it, has the, it had the highest Ka <clears throat> and the lowest pKa. The second question was which of the following... Um, solutions cannot be used for a buffer solution so the answer is a which is sulfuric acid because it is very strong and buffers are weak acids or bases and their conjugates the third question was a calculation you had to find the ph when you were given the pka and the concentrations of the acid and the conjugate so we use the henderson hasselbalch equation for the acid we know pka is 4.76 um, plus log the conjugate is 0 0.25, which is ethanoate, sodium ethanoate, and the acid was 0 0.5, which was ethanoic acid, so you get an answer as 4.46. The last question was buffer capacity. Capacity is equal to molarity divided by the change in the pH uh, times the liter of the solution, provided it is in liters. So now we were given three different values, but let's start to find the molarity first. Now the molarity of the added acid, which was HCl, is mV over 1000, or just mV. So um, we were given the number of moles, which was 0 0.1, but the volume of the solution was 10 milliliters, which is 0 0.01 liters. And hence, we get an answer of 0 0.001 as the molarity. The initial was 4.75, the final was 4.70, so we get a 0 0.05. Now, the volume of the solution was given as 50 milliliters, so 0 0.05 liters. Now, putting all these values in our buffer capacity equation, we get 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.05 divided uh, times 0 0.05, and our buffer capacity is 0.4. And that was the homework. But today's topic is equilibrium reactions. They're mainly reversible reactions. Um, and for example, here we have bromine, which is in the liquid form going into the gas phase. It is reversible. This arrow, one going to the forward direction, one going in the backward direction, is the reversible sign. Now, when you talk about equilibrium, a lot of factors come into play. So we have the temperature, we have the concentration of the reactants or the products, we have volume, we have pressure, and we have catalyst. Um, in this video, I will only speak about the concentration and the catalysts. We will start with the equilibrium constant. It is denoted as K. C. Do you remember KD, KF from coordination compounds, KW from acids and bases, KA, KB? Here we have KC as the equilibrium constant. So um, it's the same as K 
D, or K A, or K B. So K C is equal to the products divided by the reactants. And the symbol, uh, sorry, the unit is mole per dm cube. When we talk about equilibrium reactions, we're trying to find out whether the reaction will go in the forward direction or if there's going to be a spontaneous reaction or not. So KC helps us in that. So for example, if we have a KC of greater um, of value, if it's positive and it's a high number, then we say that the reaction is complete. So then it will not be reversible. But if, we, uh, if the KC is high but not as high, the product side of the reaction, the forward reaction, will be favored. If we say that the Kc is equal to zero, okay. we say that it is at equilibrium. So everything is constant. If we say that Kc is a negative number, a less negative, then it will be uh, the reactant side of the reaction is favored, so the backward reaction is favored. Or if it's really negative, then we say that the reaction will be incomplete. It will not go to completion. Now let's speak about entropy. It is very important. Entropy is the disorder of a system. So depending on how much one system is disorganized, then the entropy increases. It is denoted as S. So let's have an example. Here we have like a solid, then we have a liquid, and then we have a gas. You can see that the molecules in a solid are tightly packed. In a liquid, they're a bit loose, and in the gas, they're really far apart. So there is more likely to be disorder in the gas than in the liquid than in the solid because they have more um, space to move around to be disorganized. So as you go um, from a solid um, towards a liquid and a gas, the entropy increases. Okay, for example, we'll use our same uh, reaction that we used in the beginning of this uh, lesson. So bromine liquid going into gas. What can you say about the entropy of this reaction? The entropy is increased by the liquid becomes a gas. Okay, in order to find the entropy, you need to know a few formulae. So we have three types of entropy. We have entropy of a system, we have entropy of surroundings, and we have the total entropy. So the formula for each one is for system, you have the entropy of the products minus the entropy of the reactants. This will give you the entropy of the system. For surroundings, it is minus delta H over T, where delta H is the change in enthalpy and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Then delta S total is the addition, the sum of delta S system and delta S surroundings. The main one is delta S total and it is very important. Why? Because if delta S is positive, then the reaction is spontaneous, most likely to be spontaneous. If delta S is zero, the reaction will be at equilibrium. And if delta S is negative, the reaction is most likely to be non-spontaneous. Okay, now a little bit about N. Enthalpy. enthalpy is denoted as H and it is about heat energy. Two terms you need to know. We have exothermic and endothermic. Now exothermic is the loss of heat energy. So the delta H is going to be negative or H in general is going to be negative. Endothermic is the gain in heat energy and hence the uh, enthalpy is going to be a positive number. So enthalpy is quite important because it comes in the formula for delta S of surroundings. So why is it important? You need to know some conditions. So if you want to make a reaction spontaneous, we would want a positive delta S surroundings, right? So this is the formula. Now, if a reaction was exothermic, it is more preferable to be spontaneous. Why? Because the formula has a minus in it and minus minus cancel out to give us a plus. So we would prefer an exothermic reaction. And if we had an exothermic reaction, we would likely want to decrease the temperature. Why? Because if we decrease the temperature, the numerator will increase and hence the entropy of the surrounding will also increase. Now if, let's say, we had an endothermic reaction, so then we have a 
a positive delta H and then minus and plus become minus. So in this case, in order to make the reaction more favorable, we would increase the temperature. Why? So once we increase the temperature, the numerator will decrease and the entropy of the surroundings will be less negative. In exothermic, we would want to decrease the temperature and in an endothermic reaction, we would want to increase the temperature. Now let's speak about Gibbs free energy. It is denoted as G and it is the most important factor for deciding whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. It is the most important. If the Gibbs free energy is negative, the reaction is 100% spontaneous. And if it is positive, it is not spontaneous. It is the only parameter that if it is negative, it will be spontaneous and not if it's positive. The formula for finding the Gibbs free energy is delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where G is Gibbs free energy, the change. H is the change in enthalpy. T is the temperature in Kelvin and delta S is the change in entropy. This equation links all of these parameters. If delta G is equal to zero, then we can say that the reaction is at equilibrium. We have a few terms. So if delta G is greater than zero, it is going to be positive. And if delta G is less than zero, it is going to be negative. If it is positive, it is known as endergonic reaction. If it is negative, it is known as exergonic reaction, a bit like exothermic and endothermic. And if it is zero, it is anergonic. So we know that exergonic reactions are spontaneous and endergonic are non-spontaneous. For an example of an exergonic reaction is catabolism, which is breaking down of molecules. And an example of endergonic is anabolism, which is the building up of molecules. The last part of today's video, we'll speak about catalysts. Catalysts uh, they increase the rate of reactions, but they have no effect on an equilibrium reaction. So there are two types of catalysts that you need to know. There's one that is called homogeneous, and there's one that's called heterogeneous. So the difference is that homogeneous is in one phase or one mixture, where the catalyst and the solution or the medium it is acting on are of the same phase. For example, the catalyst is solid and the medium is also solid. But in heterogeneous, the catalyst can be liquid and the, the medium can be a solid. So there are two or more phases. That is it for today's lesson. Now moving on to the homework. The first question is an MCQ. So the question is, which one of the following is true about water going into gas at 110 degrees Celsius? Is it A? Is it B or is it C? Look at the um, factors carefully and then decide. The next question is another MCQ with only two options. So you have to tell me which one has the highest entropy. In which state of copper sulfate? And the last question for today is, will the following reaction be spontaneous? And whatever answer you give me, you have to tell me why. All right. So the reaction is water going from a liquid form to a solid form. And you are given the enthalpy of this reaction. It is 46 kilojoules per mole. Now thinking of all the things that we did today in this lesson, you have to figure out if this reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. I will see you in the next part of Equilibrium Reactions. Until then, take care. Bye. <laughs>